friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. And welcome to part two of setting up this Epiphone Triumph guitar and putting it back in working order. In part one, I failed to mention that this was an older video. Melissa has rescued it from the vault, if you will, and uh, putting it together and doing a great job. She has spent, a, I would say, nearly a full week editing this part two and part three. Part three is basically finished as well. I just haven't put my blessing to it yet because I've just been crazy busy. But I just thought I'd tell you, just this, this is the truth. Can you see my stick tally there? That's how many times this part crashed on me while I was just reviewing what she did. I made almost no edits to it at all. She did a great job. But can you imagine working on that a whole week, how many times it must have crashed on her? Each time it crashed, it takes about two minutes to reload because she took 85 clips, I think it was, or 80 some clips, I don't know the exact number, and she had to put them all together, which was about probably five or six hours worth of raw footage, and she converted it down to two hours of footage, and that's what I was going through. So all I was going through in this part is just the first hour and uh, trying to find things that we could just cut out, but I think she cut out all the junk and it, I think she did a great job, so, and I think you're gonna really enjoy this part, but I just wanted you to, to kind of have a flavor for how much work goes into this. Seriously, it took her a full week to do this. She's well worth her money, don't get me wrong, but if you figure at her salary rate, what it costs me to put this video out, so I certainly hope you will appreciate the effort. I certainly hope you appreciate what it's costing me. And I certainly hope you will at least give it a thumbs up at the end, or if not at the beginning here. So enjoy this video. I know you're gonna like it and uh, it just gets better and better. The body binding issue on this guitar is complicated. I needed a fairly tall binding. This thin black binding is actually tall enough, but the problem is it didn't come in the right thicknesses that I needed. I could get it this same size in white, but I couldn't get it thick enough, wide enough this way. The one that was wide enough is crazy tall, so this sticks up way high of what I need, but it's wide enough. So, it's just complicated is all. This stuff is, is taller than I need also. Bottom line is, what I'm gonna have to do is cut them both to the right height, laminate them together, then run them through my thickness sander on opposite sides to thin the black down some more and to thin the white down some more because it's gonna be way too thick. But that's the only way I could come up with the right combination of stuff to make this work. So that's where we're headed. We're gonna cut these down to the right uh, height first, and then we're gonna laminate them together, and then we're gonna thickness sand them. And at least that's the plan. Sometimes plans change. Got both pieces of the binding uh, to the right height. Now, in the past, I've used acetone to, to glue these together and running them through a little press thing while you acetone them and then they stick together. If you don't have to bend it too much, it works pretty good, but if you have to bend tight bends, kind of like these tight bends here, then generally it separates. That's been my experience with this crappy PVC binding. I've got this thought, and I don't know if it's worth a darn or not, but since I have to thin both of these out anyway, because they're going to be way too thick when I'm done, since I have to thin them out anyway, I'm thinking about sanding one side of the binding, the two sides that are going to mate together. I'm thinking about gluing one side of the plastic on each one, the mating sides that are going to be glued together with the acetone. And I think that roughing that up will make that acetone make these things stick better. That's my theory. I could be totally wrong. But I'm going to give that a shot because it doesn't work all that great the way it is anyway, especially with these real slick sides. We've got our little Stumac press here. And before somebody says I've got it together wrong with the spring showing here, I put a much bigger, heavier spring in the other slot. So this is the original spring. It takes a lot of pressure to pull that apart. So 
you know, that's just an experiment too. I don't have, this will be the first time I've tried it. I do it so that I push it through and, and then the, the finished product is laying flat on my table here. And that keeps it from, you know, canning round and, and trying to break the joint. So let's get started and see what happens. I'm going to pull it on through a little ways. Got the acetone in a little cup here and we're gonna paint the acetone in between the joint and then I'll pull it back through the press to glue those and then from that point on we'll be working out here putting glue in the joint and I say glue it's acetone is all it is we're gonna let this set overnight too probably doesn't need to but I really want to give it the best chance of bonding I do think already it just feels like it's really sticky because of uh, sanding that shiny surface off of there so that may have helped I'm not sure it helped but I think it did in case you don't know what this is doing it's just putting a pressure on these two pieces to kind of help melt them together and like I said it's putting a lot of pressure on them because I put a much bigger spring in it much stronger spring I would say twice as strong as the original spring plus the original spring is in there too and this is the first time I've used it with the heavier spring so it's an experiment. It seems like it's working though. Yeah, I think roughing the surface is a good idea. I don't know if I've ever tried roughing the surface before. I can't remember, but I don't think I have. I think this is the first time I've done that. Some of you may say, well, that's what you're supposed to do. You know, I don't know. Maybe you are. I just never have done it. Pulling it through really slow here at the very end just so it has a little bit more time to bond. Okay, I'm going to call that good and bonded. We're going to let that set for at least 24 hours. We've got all the tape off the neck and uh, peg head here and the binding is on there. Of course, it's bright white, which doesn't really match. But like I said, we can address that later. Right now, we've got to get, this is where the work really comes in on binding. We have to address all this binding down to make it match up. Like it's just a hair proud of the of the neck here. So your fingernail could actually catch on the binding, if you will. Same way on the top, it's even a little more so on the top because it's about level with the frets right now. So that all has to come down to the level of the fret board. Yeah, I could have probably cut it down a little bit more, but you know, it gets a little tedious cutting that stuff too because it'll tear and you know, you, you grab in your saw. And so you just, you, you got to play it safe. So I've cut it down pretty low and then here you got to do the same thing. I normally just use several different tools, single edge razor blades, those little finger plane blades. I just use all kinds of blade, sometimes exacto knives to do it. One of my very loyal viewers so kindly sent me a gift here that uh, may help in this venture. Uh, I'll just give you his name is Charles K and he's from down in Winter Springs, Florida. And he also builds uh, instruments. Fold his name back there because I don't know that he gave me permission to give it out. But uh, he builds all these different instruments you, you can see. Now these are apparently on display at uh, the High Spirit Nightclub and Casino in Florence, Montana. That's a long ways from Florida. <laughs> So, and he sent me a very nice note, and uh, he's an older gentleman, and he, apparently he made these tools for scraping binding. Now, this tool is holding apparently an X-Acto knife. Uh, it's like an X-Acto knife blade, but I think it's actually a surgical scalpel blade in this case. And so you can see that the binding would ride along here and that little point of the blade would scrape the binding. We'll give it a shot. I gotta be honest, first opinion on it, and I'm, I'm trying to be kind. I, I, I certainly appreciate the idea and the thought and, you know, and all the effort it took to send all this. But my first thought is it's a little bulky for me. I, you know, me personally, I like that little small feel of everything and get in there for that detail. This seems a little bit heavy. While it will work on, on the binding itself, uh, I think, it won't work down on this part of the binding against the neck. You, that won't work there. Um, he did also send me a, a nice little knife that he made uh, out of uh, antler uh, that also holds one of those surgical uh, scalpel blades. 
and he very graciously sent along a supply of blades uh, in different sizes. Here's the 25 size. He sent me about four of those. And uh, very sharp, I'm sure. <laughs> Be careful with those. And he sent me about four of these uh, number uh, 15 C's. That's a little tiny blade there. And he sent me about four of these 12's, which is the hook blade. I tell you, that looks just plumb scary, that hook blade. <laughs> but I do thank you very much, uh, Mr. K, uh, down there in uh, Florida, for sending all that. It's very nice of you. We'll try to put some of it to the test right here on this guitar. Although, i got to be honest, this test with these frets here, again, I'm not sure this is the best place to try this. Up on the peg head up here, maybe it'll work better. So let's give it a shot up here on the peg head. And I would assume you, you do it like this. Boy, it just curls it right off of there, I will say that. So it's pretty nice. Not bad at all. It definitely curled it off there at the beginning. It seems like it's sticking a little bit right now might be how I'm using it you know you got to get used to a tool and uh, you can adjust it for the depth of cut and it's not quite deep enough yet I need to adjust it out just a teeny amount more we'll try that and see if that's deep enough well I will say it does work pretty good and it does feel nice in your hand it's got a very nice contour feel to it it just fits your hand really well not bad not bad it's a pretty cool tool it's going to take me a little while to get used to it. I'm not sure I'm going to use it too much on this one here because it it's just kind of hard to do it on this one. But I will probably use that more down the road, especially maybe on the guitar we're building and we'll be able to use it around that long body, you know. And I think around long curves like that, I think this thing will be really really nice. For now, I'm going to go back to my old faithful, my old reliable here. I like the feel of this because I can feel my hand right against it and I can adjust the depth almost instantly just by a re-grip on the tool. I feel like I'm a little faster with this method just because I'm used to it. Well, we're going to have to do a ton of scraping and we'll have to do a ton of scraping along places like this. So. You know, back here I'm scraping this so that the binding will roll into the curve of the finish of the neck. So it's going to take a lot of work. We'll just do this off camera and show you what it looks like when we're finished. Just thought I'd show a different technique. When I get into these fret boards, a lot of times I use files more than scrapers. And what I do first is I just, you know, because it's so tall, I just go through and just kind of file everything down to just about where it's starting to touch the frets. It's just a fast way for me to do it. It may not be the best way for someone else, but it works good for me. And you, you kind of, you're almost doing a draw file. Uh, it, it's just a long 45, kind of like a draw file. Then after you get it down to about where you're starting to touch the tops of all the frets, then I just take a regular file and I put my finger over here so I don't hit the other binding on the other side. And I just literally file it off till I get it right down to the fretboard. And it only takes a few seconds. You gotta keep your file clean, but you can see how quick you can get that file down like that now. And then once you get it pretty clean like that, then you can take your single edge razor blade and even clean it up a little bit more and kind of round it off like that. And you can even use your file to kind of round it off a little bit too. Anyway, that's what I've done here, uh, up through here, and it's working really good. Uh, just thought I'd mention that. So sometimes files are better than scrapers, especially when you got all these wire, these, uh, wire frets crossing over there. Well, I've got pretty much the whole fretboard done. I'm going to try his little tool again on, on part of this, I think, just to see how it's doing here. I, you know, it definitely, you know, lets you put some pressure on it and you can cut off quite a bit with one stroke. But it still does feel awkward to me just because I'm not used to it. Pretty cool tool though. Well thought out. This is kind of how I do a lot of it though. I take a file and just rough it out and you know I've got in the camera you probably can't tell I don't have the file flat to the peg head I have it angled like this and when I start to get close to it then I know I'm you know you just you just have to know when to stop and but this is a fast way to get rid of a lot of this binding 
and it keeps it good and flat too and then when I get down pretty close and I can tell by feel when I'm close enough and then I can flatten it out a little bit more too at the end there and now I know I just got just a little bit more to take off of that right there and now I'll go up here and work on this section and you know actually the the keys would it would be a little easier to do this with the keys weren't on here but they don't really pose much of a problem either I will say I really do like how that glue is holding this binding on here. I thought maybe that would turn loose and you know I'd have problems with it as I'm working on this that the binding would come loose and none of it's come loose so far. It just feels really solid. So if you're not using that canopy glue mentioned at the earlier part of this video then you should be. You should change because this stuff is really handy compared to anything else I've used. Thank you so much to the viewer who mentioned that and I'm sorry I don't remember names that's the one thing I can't remember is names and song titles well we're just gonna keep working on that it occurred to me that I was working away cleaning up this binding for this guitar and I wasn't filming anything on this after you laminate these two pieces of binding together then you have to clean them up one of the best ways to do is take a flat razor blade and just you scrape the whole surface what I'm doing in this case because we got a lot more work to do to this binding yet is I'm just trying to get one flat side on the black. In other words, there can be glue or you know it stuff that squeezes out, and you want that flat because if you got a lump in there, then that when you put it through the sander, that lump's going to show up or raise it'll raise the white in that spot. So in other words, I'm just flattening the black. I'm going to run it through my sander on the black because the sander cuts from the top, and so I'll be cutting the white down first, and then I'll turn it over on the white and cut the black down. So and I'll cut it down to whatever thickness I think it needs to be here and we're going to measure that right now and see what because we're just about ready to run this through there and uh, see if we can't make this work out for that guitar. What I'm going to do is measure it in a bunch of places and try to get an average of how thick it needs to be. That's 116 thousandths roughly. I'll just measure it in just a bunch of different places almost 130 I mean when I say almost that is about 4,000 shy of that so I'm just kind of using the 130 as my roundup number so if we can get the binding to measure exactly 130 thousands then we'll be big enough everywhere probably yeah 125 so if we can go to 130 just check it up here in a few more places 125 so yeah 125 looks like it's pretty close yeah different places it measures different things but we're going to shoot for about 130. i'm going to uh let's see right now we're well, what are we? We're pretty thick, I'm pretty sure. We're a hundred and, well, we're not too terribly bad. 160, two or three. So we'll take just a little bit off the white first, just to uh, make sure that uh, it's flat. Then we're gonna turn it over and take some off the, off the black and make sure it's flat so that we got a good parallel piece. And then we'll see where we're at and we'll decide at that time where to take the rest of it off. Okay, that left us at about 146, maybe a little more, depends. Better double check this, make sure the caliper's zeroed out, it is. Okay, yeah, 146 I'm gonna say. So that would mean we need to take 16 thousandths off. We'll probably split the difference there. I'll take off about, oh, eight or so. And that's, you know, I just have a feel for it. That's gonna be in the ballpark. Let's just check to see where we're at now for sure. Okay, we're at about a hundred and, well, actually 41 probably. So we still need to take off about 11 thousandths. Yeah, about that, 141. Okay, so take off about 11 thousandths. I still want to take a little more off the black, I think. So I'm just going to take just a little bit more off the black and then we'll take the rest off the white. Make it sound of a sound. I didn't take much off of there, so I don't expect too much of a change. 137 or 8, looks like, so we took a few thousands off. 130, I'm going to say 7. I'm going to take a little bit more off the white now. I think we'll probably be good after that. We might have to take one more spring pass just to be sure. And the high speed That's right on the money, 130 thousands according to this. I don't know if you can, it's hard to hold it where it doesn't spring the calipers open here, but maybe I can get it where you can see it. Right on the money, 130 thousandths.
don't know if you can see that or not. So it, you can be very, very accurate with this. Well, assuming the video in the other room turned out, you saw how we got this down to 130 thousandths, uh, pretty much right on the money. This side is going to be the side that's going to go down. I'm going to go back over it one more time, make sure there's no big burrs or anything on it. It's uh, It's been rough sawed, so this part, I'll put that down where you won't see it. The other, it's not going to require much scraping, so I don't really want to leave this up to have to scrape this off because there might be a saw mark or something that we'll still see. So we'll put this side down. That should hide any saw marks if there are any left. It's hard to uh, hold this where it doesn't run off the table and put stress on it where it's hard to scrape. That's pretty good. I'm going to just knock the corner of this lower white off and maybe the lower black too just so that there's nothing there that would get in the way of, of uh, getting it to stick. Rub my hand across it to make sure there's nothing stuck there that I can feel. Feels pretty smooth. And this part will go up. I can still feel a burr on the upper inside of this black, so I'm going to take knock that burr off. We don't want any burrs anywhere that will interfere with the glue. Okay, I think we're in pretty darn good shape. Take a look and see what it's going to look like there. I think it's going to go on there pretty good. Yeah, I think that's going to look real nice. It still feels a little proud to me. A little more than I maybe even want. you got to do a lot of work to get it down there. I think what I'll do is I'll go around this and make sure this is all scraped good and flat. That'll make a difference too. We'll do that and... Uh, Come back and get it all glued up. There's a little spot right here that's not glued down where the black's not, and black, white, black's not glued all the way to the body. And I'm not sure why, but I'm gonna get in there and pick out all the junk that's in there with this little uh, specially made X-Acto blade. Should be able to pick it all out, press that back in and make sure that gets glued back to s at the same time when we glue the other piece of binding on. Closing up pretty good there now, it looks like. Maybe a little bit up here yet in the way. Uh, yeah, that closes up now. I hope it'll, a lot of, pressure on that though so it's going to be tough to close that but we'll do what we can the binding feels pretty flush now with the guitar so that's pretty good it won't take much scraping this time what we'll have to do now is rough bend this all so that it will conform because it's too stiff to make the tape hold it it's just way too stiff and we've got a little spot up here where it has to tuck in these holes and i'm going to have to get the ends cut down enough that they'll go in those holes to hold it so I'll start with that, just scraping the very end of it off, like about a quarter of an inch. Thin it down to see if it'll go in there. It's just about to go. I want to really jam it into that crack so that it won't be likely to come out. I don't want it to be a loose fit. So I'm kind of tapering it too as I thin it there. The very end is tapered down a little bit more so that it'll get tighter the further it goes back in there. It's hard to hold it because it wants to flop down on the floor here. That's probably good enough, but I want more than that. It's not getting in there very far. And I want it to go in there, oh, I don't know, probably close to an eighth of an inch at least. Take this pencil and I'm gonna mark it this time to see how deep it's going in there. Don't think it's going in all that deep. I'm going to make sure the hole's cleared out. There's nothing in the way. It's going back in that far, the pencil mark you can see right there. So it's not too bad. And I'm going to take it in some more if it'll go. Yeah, that's plenty good right there. Now we're in there pretty far. That's my starting point. Now I have to get this all to soften up and bend to get it pretty close to the shape of the guitar. Otherwise, we're going to have trouble. And it's hard to hold this... Uh, tail end of this binding. It wants to flop everywhere. It does not want to cooperate at all. And that just makes it that much harder. I'm going to bend this freehand off of the guitar because I really want to heat it up enough to make sure that it's going to stay. Of a passenger train Becomes a part of the soul And the heart of the mind Of a boy who's trained By the railroad line Well, this has been sitting for actually almost two days. 
because I just couldn't get back to it. Now we're going to take all the tape off of it and uh, see how well the binding looks. We've got all the tape off of it and now it's just a matter of going around and scraping all the binding flat. I've got this binding scraper provided by one of my viewers. He made these. Uh, apparently an older gentleman with uh, trouble holding on to a small scraper. And uh, this works real good on these big flat areas, I will tell you that. It's adjustable for the thickness of your binding. This is some really crazy wide binding here. This binding is, you know, from the inside purfling to the outside, it's pretty close to a quarter inch. It's not quite that big, but it's, you're getting up there. This binding's almost flat the way it is, the way I cut it and sanded it. Very little scraping needs to be done. I was born in the by the railroad line. Okay, I got the rough part of it off. I'm going to go to a single edge razor blade and work on detail stuff now, like rounding off the corner. I don't want the corner sharp. And the big round pity that you laid on the rails and the wheels smash flat. What you do on this is you, you kind of 45 it and then you kind of bevel off that and bevel off that and so it basically becomes round. It's pretty good. It feels, feels pretty smooth now. Now I'm going to go on this edge here and thin the edge down a little bit. The edge is just a hair proud in most places and I'll try to go with this and see how the well this does. It's a part of the past, never quite turned loose. It's a part of the soul and the heart and the mind of a boy who's raised by the railroad line. I'm doing now is I'm taking a single edge razor blade and I'm going around this and I'm blending the two pieces together. There's a little bit of a seam or gap between them. And when I blend it like this, this is getting rid of that seam. This was great for hogging out the material, but this one's better for the detail of getting the uh, just getting the two pieces exactly smooth together. I began to wonder if it was going to happen, but now it, now that I'm going over it with this, they're blending together real well, and it just looks like one solid piece of binding now. So I'm happy with the way it's turning out. I was beginning to worry, though. Maybe you can see what I'm talking about up close. Up here, it's not really blended together. It looks like you can see a seam between the bindings. And down here then, it's pretty much just one piece of binding. You can still see a tiny seam there if you look real close, but it's not much of a seam. Seam up here is pretty big. I think it's mostly glue, and this is scraping out all the glue and, and putting the joint right together. We'll just keep doing that till we get her all cleaned up. When you get into these really tight places where you're trying to scrape the two bindings together to get rid of the seam, you pretty much have to use a different tool. You can't get in there with a single edge razor blade well. And so I go back to my X-Acto knife and I'm using the one with the rounded blade on it because it gives you a little bit of a blending effect uh, in these tight areas like that. That worked real good to get into that tight spot there because you just can't get in there with your, your thumbs in your way, with your razor blade, you just can't get in there. So this, this extends the blade down and you can just work on it like that and hold it still. We got her all scraped down, all the binding has been smoothed out and uh, detailed, looks real good. You can feel a little bit of glue in a place or two, but this kind of glue kind of, you can kind of peel it off there with your fingernail. You just kind of rub on it or maybe with a guitar pick, and that's what I'm going to try next. But it seems to come off real clean, and uh, so that's working out real nice too. I'm pretty happy with every part of it. 
there's a little tiny seam right in here that's not quite tight and a little tiny seam right in here that's not quite tight. I'm just going to fill it and dye it black because that's it's in the black area and that's about all I can do with that at this point. But uh, it really does look real good. I'm very pleased with it. It's smooth and it's very hard to put new binding on an old finished guitar because you're trying to make the binding blend into the finish. The original binding, the finish goes over it and it blends much better. So that's what you're trying to do is, is match that blend and it's very difficult to do. It's done pretty well here. I don't think it's a, a, a real problem. What we're going to try to do is tone these colors down, this white down to something similar to this color here by creating some sort of a dye tee that we can wipe on here and uh, something that won't be too dark but it'll kind of make it match the uh, old patina. We're going to do that here in a little while. Something you'd have to feel to appreciate is often I take a thin guitar pick like this and I use it kind of like a burnisher right on that joint and what it does is it it smooths the joint, it gets rid of any uh, glue that's left over you can it'll pop the glue off or, or you know like it's almost like chiseling the glue off or scraping the glue off but it also burnishes that plastic joint so that you you don't hardly feel it so unless you could feel this you wouldn't hardly notice any difference but uh, like you'll see a roughness there and then you go over it with this it just makes it feel a lot smoother and a lot better so I'm doing that all the way around just trying to make it where you don't hardly feel the transition there from the finish to the plastic. It's almost impossible to make it completely unnoticeable, but uh, you can you can definitely do things like this to improve the feel. And also if there's little loose fibers on the binding, this will get rid of those too. We've jumped over some major hurdles on this uh, guitar. So we've got the peg head bound, the neck bound, the you know, uh, fretboard, all that bound all the way around. All the top bound with all the binding that was missing there. The only thing we didn't rebind was the back. And the back is in very good shape on the binding. So there's no need to touch that. Now we're ready to move on to phase two. <laughs> phase one was a doozy. Phase two, I hope, won't be that bad. Phase two is fixing all these cracks. There's there's cracks here, crack here, and the back is loose in this general area right here, uh, right in this area, and there's a good chunk of wood missing out of this area right here. I've checked the case. Unfortunately, that chunk of wood is not there. So let's get her all glued back together and see if we can replace this chunk of wood and blend it in. There's a fairly large area right here that's loose and it's loose on the inside the tops loose I think in this case I'm going to stabilize it with the super glue and then I'm going to work from the inside uh, I think some of the kerfing's missing on the inside and I can get to it from the sound hole on this side I think I'm going to start by just trying to more or less clamp it together with the super glue CA glue. It looks good on this outside band here. I think that's going to work good. All right, now I'm going to more or less stabilize this edge and then I'm going to work from the inside and work on it a little bit. I'm trying to hold it as level as possible as I put the accelerator on there to keep it in that spot. I think I got it. I think it's going to be solid now. Just making sure here, holding it a little extra long there. Ah, that's much better. I can just tell already it's good and solid there now. Okay, well <clears throat> that kind of stabilized it. Now I can work from the inside and put some wood glue in there. I'm going to glue this crack. I think we got it. I can actually get down through this sound hole. I can see what's missing in there and I think I can fill it in, make it work from the outside here. Matter of fact, I see a spot where I might be able to get some of the CA glue in, help hold it a little bit better. I'm holding with this stick, I'm holding a piece of wood down in there that's on the uh, kerfing that's just popped up, but this is now it's glued with the super glue, CA glue. And I'm going to spritz it with this. I think we got it. Now I'm going to try to get it way down in here further. Okay, and I've got those poked back in there. Now I've got to get the glue down in there. These long skinny nozzles, they give me trouble. I have to cut them off. They, they always seem to uh, clog up the long ones. So I cut off about at least a third of it to start with right here. I won't be able to reach it, but with any luck I can take the dropper and drop it right in the place I need it. And I'm getting there, yep. 
Got it. Perfect. Going right where I need it. Let it set a couple seconds there so it won't foam up. There is a little bit of kerfing missing and I'm going to make some kerfing and stick it in there and I think I can reach it with a long stick and push it right in place and glue it. I'm going to put a little more of this on that loose area in there if I can. It's falling right where I want it. I think we got her. That would probably be enough uh, but I'm going to there's a little bit of kerfing missing and I'm just going to make some and stick it in there to help this area right here, especially where this is broke out. Just about in that same cracked place, there's some kerfing missing about that long and I'm going to stick some in there. As I mentioned, there's a piece missing in there and it's it looks to be about the size of this, which I've, I've just broke this off to this length. I'm going to see if there's any chance of getting it up in there. Just going to drop it in there, take this stick, and see if I can maneuver it into place. First thing it had to do was turn upside down. Couldn't turn the right way, of course. Any way but the right way is the way it has to turn. It cannot turn the right way. Now, now it's also flipped 180. That helps. Now I've got it back. Now if I can get it into place. Oh, I can't believe it. Fell right into place there. Looks pretty darn good. It almost looks like it's made for it. Just a little different, but not much different than what was there. Well, it would work perfectly except for there's a little tiny piece of the old stuff still broke off in the spot that I want to put this. So I'm going to have to get me a long chisel or something and knock out a little piece there and then it'll fit just about perfect. Don't think I can reach it with this. Boy, I'm going to have to make me something special to get down in there and knock out a little tiny chunk. This piece of wire had a hook on the end of it already. I just cut the hook off a little bit. Then I took a ball peen hammer and just pounded it out flat. Then I just took a file and filed a sharp edge on it. I didn't ha bother harding, hardening it because I'm only going to try to scrape out one little tiny piece. I think it'll work, but if it doesn't, I can always harden it. If it's quite the right shape, it's almost... There we go, got one piece out. Got them both, I think. There's a little piece up above, up here. I'm gonna try to scrape the edge a bit down. I think I got it. A little bit left, I think. A little bit more there of the one piece. I'm pretty sure it's gone now. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm going to try to get the junk out of there because it's gonna get in my way. All right, so if I can get that loose piece back down there that I cut for that, except that all the dirt that's in there is going right there too, so. Still gonna have to get this dirt out of here. There we go. I think we got most of the dirt out now. There it is. All right, I've got the piece down in there still that uh, that I made for it that should fit right in there. That looks good. It almost looks like it was made for it. A little bit off, but not much. Still, still doesn't seem to fit though. The corner doesn't doesn't seem to fill out the corner real good. All right, I've got it in one spot. If I could just get glue on that one spot, then I could uh, hold that spot uh, and then hold the other end and glue it, and I think it'll be fine. Okay, I'm just gonna glue one end of it down. That ought to be plenty to hold this one end. There we go, got it right where I want it. Holding it with that, now I'll spritz it in there. I think I'll be able to wedge it in place with this piece of metal and get the other end glued. That really does look like good coverage in there. I think we've got it whipped. Did turn a little white in places. Probably didn't wait long enough on a couple of those. Let's see if I can scrape out the white, but I don't think I can. It's uh, it's good and solid now. I'm not I'm not worried about this back at all. It's it's really solid where all that was loose before, so I think we're in good shape. We've got one big long crack here that uh, I'm gonna stabilize with this CA glue again because it'll go in this crack really good and penetrate. Holding that there and I'm going to, I'm blowing on it to let it start setting up before I spritz it. That way it shouldn't turn white. Very good. Good deal. Now this particular crack, because of the fact that it's so easy to bang this and hit it, I'm going to cleat this. I don't always cleat cracks, but because this one's hanging out here in the open like this, and you could bang this and it'll pop that, then I'm going to definitely cleat this on the inside. Same way with this side here. It should be good. Okay, so we've got both of those cracks stabilized now until, and then we'll put cleats in there later. 
Let's go to the back. We've got this stabilized. So everything's stabilized. Now I don't think there's any other cracks that I need to work on. So I'm good with that. But now this big chip out here. This is a really large chip out. I think you can see it's a pretty big chip out. It's it's deep. It's uh, close to an eighth inch deep. Tapers up to, you know, about a sixteenth of an inch here at the back of the crack. This is one of those situations where you definitely should just make it worse so that you can make it better. And the reason is because there's no way I'm going to be able to match all of that. It's just impossible with a, with a piece of wood that I put in there. It's just impossible. I wish I could, but you just can't do it. I'm going to go cut some pieces of wood and just start to monkey with just sitting them in there just to see what may be the best way. I, You know, I could cut it out square. I could just make a long semicircle and, and leave the edges smooth. I'm not really sure yet. I'm just going to cut a chip it to a wood and kind of stick it on there and just see what I think. I did was I laid a piece of carbon paper on here upside down I put a piece of paper on here just like this and then I just rubbed it my finger over the edges and it just made enough of a mark very very light mark that I could pencil that in which is what I did here I'm gonna cut that out glue it to this piece of wood and make that piece of wood fit this hole hopefully that's the idea now the trick is this has got to go on face down for it to be the right grain orientation so I'll have to think about that too. So I'm going to glue this piece of paper on here then cut it out and profile it as close as I can to see if we can get it to fit this hole. I switched out for a different piece of wood. I think this is going to match better and it's about the right thickness to start with which will help. I'm just using a glue stick and putting it on top of this. That should work good. While I'm on the subject I've tried literally I would I want to say at least a dozen of these different sticks at you know at least eight or nine different kinds and the only one that seems to work consistently for me is the simple Elmer's uh, glue stick I've tried all the other ones and I just have had I've tried scotch I've tried staples brand I've tried several other brands that you know you can find like at Walmart and different places and so far that's the only one that I think really does work well. All the rest of them, they might work good on one thing, but they don't work good on something else. You know, I also use it to stick on labels occasionally, especially for out of country labels. Anyway, I'm gonna cut that out now and see if we can make that fit in there. I decided to go for the gusto and cut it right to the lines. Might not work, might have to do it again. I thought, might as well go, just go for it. Because most always I'm having to cut them down, cut them down, cut them down, cut them down. So I just decided to just go right to the line and see what it looks like. All I'm doing now is just kind of getting rid of the burr that's, you know, from the saw that the saw left on the underside. Let's just see if it even starts to go in the hole. And it doesn't, so. That's weird because I really did cut it tight. Oh, I see what the problem is. It's uh, my line, I didn't, it fooled me. I was cutting it to the outside of the binding here, it looks like. Well, what I'll do then is, looks like it needs to be filed just a little bit on this corner. What I'm gonna do is under file it a little bit on these, corner so that they'll it'll be a tight fit as it goes in there very hard to hold Let's see if I can line up the outside of this it actually lines up pretty darn tight actually try and I can't keep it in there and hold it and it doesn't want to hold anyway I basically just got to cut off the binding so pretty much got to just cut off about that much and I think it's going to fit I think I'll just use the sander and sand up to that line and I think we'll be pretty good. I get bit by the chicken there and I uh, sanded only half of halfway to the line. I thought I'd look at it again and see what it looks like. It's going to need every bit of it and maybe more than that even. Need to go that much more it looks like. So we're going to take off that much more. Now let's see. Pretty close, but not there yet. And it's mostly on this end, so it's more aggressive here, less aggressive as I go around there. So we just need to take off a little bit more on this edge, taper into almost nothing there. It really looks close to going. Um, I think I need to cut out a corner right here. 
that's kind of it's just not it's not flat yet it's not cut out enough so I try cutting it out it's gonna be hard it might work it helped a little I imagine nip off just a little bit of the sharp corner here maybe from the underside even try that boy it's getting close I see a problem. I think my curve is a little more than I need on this back side here. Get rid of some of the curve here on the back side. It is very close to going in that hole now. And it's gonna be a tight fit, I think. Boy, I'm really, I'm really close. What I'm doing is I'm putting it in the vise, this little vise here, and I'm just I'm beveling the back side, the bottom side of the of the part so that it'll start to go down in the hole a little bit but I'm not really cutting the top side the part that you can see that might be enough to make the difference right there here's a little part right here I think we'll put that on there and see what that looks like we've got to be getting very close now oh man I can feel it wanting to go in it's uh I can't quite force it, I don't think. I think that would be too much. I wish I could tell exactly where it's touching everywhere. I think it's touching right here a lot, so I'm gonna knock down the back edge. That's almost it. It's going in the hole, that's for sure. It's a little loose here and a little tight here, so I'm gonna knock off a little bit of this. Wow, that's just about it. You could call that good enough if you wanted to, but I'm going to work on it a little bit more because I think I can get it a little bit better yet. I think that's it. I thought so, but maybe not. Maybe I can do just a teeny bit more on this corner over here, or maybe I can scrape out this corner a little bit. I think that's the problem. I think this corner is a little high. There you go. Now I bet it'll go. Now I bet it'll go. There you go, that's down in there. And uh, you know, it's still proud of the surface obviously, but that's what you want. You always want it to be a little proud and you glue it in there and then you just shape it back down to the thing, stain it and you're good to go. It's, it's tight, I mean, it's not coming out of there. You gotta pull it out. Pretty happy with that. So I think we can glue that in place. I'll just go ahead and use tight bond since it's pretty much self clamping. And then we'll just let her set for a little while and then carve it back off. I'm wanting to get these edges coated good because, you know, you, that's the hard part to fill. And if the edges are coated a little bit, then they'll that glue will help fill a little bit. It's pretty close to being airtight fit anyway, but there's always gaps there. Okay, that's it, man. You can't get it much tighter than that. That's about as good as it's going to get right there. We'll let that set up for an hour and then we'll carver down. This patch has been sitting drying for more than an hour now. This little finger plane is pretty sharp. It's, uh, it's not the new one that I just got, but uh, I'm going to use it because I know it's already sharp. And you have to go at a certain angle on this hard maple, so okay, this angle cuts better. Cuts like butter going the right direction. That's really pretty slick right there. can hardly feel it now. That's, that's pretty slick already just maybe take a scraper to it now and clean it up a little bit it's really pretty good really can't even hardly feel it at all got some 400 sandpaper here this whole area is messed up so i'm just going to sand the whole area a little bit well there's an i think i see another crack here that i really didn't really notice before this crack right here i'm going to have to put glue in too i don't think i glued that earlier although maybe i did yeah i probably did this whole area right here, I think it had been dropped, and, and this whole area is kind of shattered. That's why everything was loose inside. So we'll just clean this area up, and we'll just have to touch it up. You literally can't feel it now, I don't think, at all. This crack, it, uh, it still looks a little open. I think it's sealed, but I don't think it's completely uh, sealed as far as airtight. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little more glue in this crack. That took care of that. Right here, I feel it kind of raising just a little bit on the corner of this here. Uh, but I think the other part's actually what is sunk down is the problem more than this being raised. Yeah, let's put a little dye to that area there and see if it makes it look better. Looking better, you know, it's still got a ways to go yet. You know, you just you just have to take it in steps. There's several places where there's chip outs where it's not black anymore, so I'm just gonna try to make those black. They I think they'll blend better later. You see places like this, I'm just gonna make those black. Usually takes two or three coats to get it fully black. 
Looks a lot better. I'm gonna blacken this one some more yet. Looking pretty darn good there. Look on this side. I imagine there's some places on this side that's gonna need to be blackened in. Sure does make it look better if you get darken up those light spots like that. You don't notice them near as much once they're darkened up. Now yeah, I'm gonna call that good for the moment and we'll look at it some more later. And yeah, let's just look up here and see while I've got the black out to see if there's anything up here that needs to be blackened in. I think there's a lot of tape residue from the when I taped the binding on, but there's not too much chip out up there, so that looks okay. Too bad. We'll look her all over, and if there's places we can touch up, we will. Pardon the background noise, if you can hear it. Uh, we're getting a pretty good frog strangler right now, and uh, it's making quite a loud uh, noise on the roof. When I looked at, you know, putting cleats in these two cracks, there's already cleats in there. I super glued this back with CA glue. That glued those cleats back as well, but I don't trust that that's enough, so I'm gonna try putting some another cleat behind those. I'm gonna make my cleat short. I put some two-way tape on this clamp, and I got my cleat with the grain running across this grain. So I've got some two-way tape on there with the cleat attached via two-way tape. I'm gonna put some tight bond on here and smear it around a little bit on the liberal side. A good coating since I can't coat the other side. Now I tested this a while ago dry and it worked. So let's see if it works now with the glue on there. I can put it down through here and it's just barely going this time for some reason. There it is. And then I can line it directly there and uh, I should be able to put some leather under here and the cleat is tapered on all four edges in case you're wondering so that it's not just a square block of wood and that looks like that did that now i'll just look in there with a little mirror and the rain's getting louder and louder looks like we did it and we're right behind the other cleat worked out real good we'll just let that set up we're going to do the same thing over here i'm just Double checking. This one here, this cleat needs to go in a little further. The, the cleat they put in is a great big cleat and it goes kind of at an angle too, so which is not good. I don't know if I could get one in front of this hole or not. Maybe. That would even be better, maybe. Well, we'll just do the best we can with what we got to work with. There's a fairly big cleat running across this angle. It kind of at an angle like that. I'm going to see if this will reach in far enough that I can get past that. I'm looking with my little mirror here. It does look like it'll get past it, but just barely. Get my mirror down, light down here where I can see better. Really hard to see what I'm trying to see. Well, let me get my lighted mirror because but this one's so big, I don't know if it'll work in this area. Hope it will. Yeah, that's better. Well, I think it's gonna work, but it's just barely gonna work. We'll just have to give it a shot and see. Because this brace runs at an angle, I'm gonna attach my brace on here at a slight angle too, just to get past it better. Otherwise, I won't get past it. I'm trying to get the paper to peel off of the stuff, and will it ever work on camera? Not likely. There it goes. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this brace at an angle like that. Put some more tight bond on here. More than I need by a long shot. Wipe some of that off. Got a little crazy there. That'll be fine. And now with any luck at all we'll get this down through this hole. Aha! We did it. And hopefully I can tighten this up. And now I'm going to get in there with my mirror and see if I'm in the right place. Otherwise it won't do any good to put it in there. Well, I'm spanning the crack, but I'll be honest, it's not as good as I would like it to be. I would we'll see if I can move it. I doubt it's going to move now. That's going to be the problem. It's, it's, see if I can get over. I'm literally trying to push it over. I think it's really hard to say. I, I know I'm spanning the crack, but I, I would, I've got more on one side than the other, and I'm just trying to move it over if it'll go over a little bit. I'm trying to use the bottom of the clamp to slide it over. Two-way tape, are, of course, has already come off. The patch is stuck to the top, but the clamp, the two-way tape came off. I'm trying to move the patch over a little bit. It's not exactly where I want it. If I can move it over with this, I may just have to live with it, because boy, it feels like it's already stuck. That's weird. Wouldn't think that uh, that tight bond would stick quite that fast, but it sure does seem stuck. So I'm not going to bother with it. It is it is spanning it, it's just not quite as centered as I would have liked it, but it's okay. I think it's going to be fine. Put the clamp 
right over the crack part where it'll what is spanning there will get glued really tight right on the crack I think it'll be fine okay so we're gonna let that set up while that's setting up I'm gonna start experimenting with some uh, dye tea here just to you know get these colors to match a little better as you can see this is bright white and this is kind of a yellowed white and we're gonna see if we can't uh, yellow that down to make it match a little better once again I was just having a good time talking to you didn't have the camera on I'm, I'm mixing up a little tea here and I've got mostly yellow and a little bit of brown in this tea it's uh, dye I'm, I'm calling it tea just because it's kind of light colored like tea you know I don't want to get it too dark too fast because I'm wanting to paint it on here and see what that's looking like you can tell that that's tinting it some. I think if I go over it a couple of times that may be pretty close. It's a little more yellow now than I maybe want. I don't know though it's not too bad. Maybe if I just put a little bit more brown in, a little bit more of the brown in here and I think we're going to be pretty close. Okay that's that's starting to get there so I'm going to put a glove on and use a little towel and just wipe it on there. Yeah that's that's not too bad. It's not it's not so much that it's uh, changing it a lot, but it's changing it. It's darkening. It's just taking that bright white edge off of it. That helps. Probably going to have to go over it a couple of times with this to, to darken it up enough. Probably going to need more than that. It's just it's not quite getting it there. Try a little more brown. Well, that's helping, but it's it's got a long ways to go, I think. The inner white is is taking the dye much better it's a different plastic and it's turning to be just about exactly the color I want it to the outer plastic is not taking the dye nearly so well that PVC stuff it's just hard to work with that's all I can tell you I'm gonna rub it pretty much all over the whole guitar everywhere there's this new white to just tone it down fortunately like I said the PVC stuff just doesn't hardly take it as nearly as well it's taking it but not nearly as well it would take it like the inner white I'd be real happy well that's weird just didn't think it would be that white it's still just not hardly taking it at all on the outside wouldn't you know strange 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 you know it just never seems to want to cooperate when you're doing something like this it just never does there's always some kind of curve hopefully I'm gonna let you see up close the inner white is taking the color much better than the outer white now you know that's just my luck. Uh, the inner white, and to my eye, looks like it matches this pretty close. But this stuff here, it's just not taking the dye. Now, I guarantee you, if I just put solid brown, it would turn it brown, no question. But, you know, trying to do it subtle like this, it's just not gonna cooperate. Now, I'm gonna add a little more brown to my tea mixture here. Straight heads up brown and try to darken it up quite a bit more and see if that will do it, but I don't have a lot of faith that it's going to really work. Now I'm going to have to be more careful and just paint it on. That's looking pretty good. I can see a difference there that that's making. That may work. Still not quite dark enough, but when I paint it on with that, it, it gets a little darker than, than just rubbing it on with the rag. So I may just have to take my time and paint it on. Well, hopefully you can see that it's improved it. I don't know if, how much that's going to show up. It's definitely off white now compared to this I mean compared to the way it was here's what it looks like here here's where I haven't touched it uh, other well I mean I touched it the very first time but you can tell that's not much and uh, it's definitely getting darker back in here it's not terribly different than this now but it still could be a little darker. Try to put a little bit more brown in it. I don't want to have to go around this three or four different times. Prefer to only have to go around it once. That may have to be it. May just have to call that good. It's darking it up a little bit more now. And I think that may be good enough. That's close. It, you know, it's not perfect probably, but it's pretty close. It's hard to match something like this perfectly. And as you already know, I'm colorblind to boot, so that makes it even harder. But that actually doesn't look terrible there. That that's starting to look pretty decent, really. It's it looks it looks old. And the only thing different is that this has the finish over it, and I think I've got a remedy for that too. I think we're gonna work on that also so that it doesn't look like this has been replaced when we're done. It's a subtle difference, but it's it's definitely making it look better in my eyes get rid of that bright bright white it's funny why it goes on with the brush quite a bit better than it does with just wiping it on with the rag as far as the color change I guess it goes on a lot thicker with the brush yeah that looks like a hundred percent better in my eyes it's not far off of the other color I don't think I'll have to have my wife look at it just to verify that oh that's so much better 
yeah you look at it now and it looks like an old binding now or I should say that's how old bindings look to me I hope that's how they look to you all right let's go up here on the neck and work on this area and see if we can make this look a little older now hopefully you can see from one side of the peg head to the other how we've antiqued it there and it just looks better in my mind I'm gonna go ahead and go all the way around this because some of the white was I mean showing through on this old stuff too even though I didn't replace that end piece, it had gotten cleaned up to the point where it was real white too. So this will just kind of make it all look the same. Yeah, I think that's starting to look pretty good. It even kind of matches this stuff here. If you look, it's not too far off of it. So now we still got the bright white on the, along the fretboard. Better over this one more time along here. I think it'll look a little better yet. Yeah, it's not too bad there. Certainly looks better than the other side. Yeah, that's not looking too bad. I'll have to have my wife take a look at all that now and see if she thinks it needs to have some more work done on that or if that's close enough or you know, I think it's pretty close it certainly took that takes that super white edge off of it and that helped it might be a hair too yellow I don't know I think you can see that it doesn't look exactly the same it looks similar <laughs> for me for my eyes that's the way I would describe it almost could be a little darker it looks to me like I don't know if going across it again would do it or not seems like that helps a little bit more just getting it a little more dark again doesn't look like it's quite getting dark enough to me yeah, I'm gonna stop on that for now because like I said I can't really tell I need to have my wife look at it but uh, it's definitely improved at least in my opinion I've got some amber shellac off camera here I tested it here on the end and it looks like it makes it match really close to the way the uh, old patina looks so I am just going to go over the whole thing with that that will do two things it will give it a finish which uh, makes it look different all by itself and it adds a little bit more dark uh, amber color to it which is really what I think it needed to make this uh, match the old binding and it's really looking good I think so it does kind of kills two birds with one stone you have to be careful about brushing it though you can't brush it more than you know once or twice it's it removes the stain underneath it and it just makes it look weird you know that's to me, I can't hardly tell the difference now. That's really making it blend in good. Yeah, I think that's really looking nice now. Wow. <laughs> that, look, that really looks nice now to me. I, that just looks like, that just made the difference right there. It, you could, I guess you could sit there and go, yeah, I can see a difference, but it's not much different now. Between the old binding and the new binding, it really looks close we're gonna to have to let that dry now and then I've got visions of going maybe back over that with the uh, lacquer sanding sealer uh, and also blending that into the edge of the top of the guitar in places uh, where the finish is cracked or whatever and I think that way I can blend it all together and make it look like it didn't uh, come off to begin with I think it's gonna make it look real nice <laughs>